Mr. Stevens, is it worth just looking at what we'd expect to see on the, each of the pages? So what we'd expect to see on page one uh, in an overview of what we'd expect to see on page two? Absolutely. So I'll click on, I'll go for exemplar 1B, for page number one. Mm -hmm. It's probably worth pointing out at this time, these are old exemplar material. They're not going to be relevant for this year's contexts. Uh, so please don't copy anything off them. What we're showing you here really is the layout and the way that these students have communicated their thoughts and ideas uh, in order to get the top marks. Mm -hmm. And if I can also add, I mean, the, the student that created this uh, this example um, did extremely well. However, there's far too much written work here. Mm -hmm. uh, you, yeah. you have to understand that a project that takes you two terms to complete, it may it may only take 20 minutes for your teacher or your moderator to mark because essentially that's all we have in terms of the time that we have. So this this example here, I would say is much more suitable. It's more succinct. Um, so essentially what I would be looking for here is perhaps you would like to copy and paste the context written work as, as it stands in OCR's release. I think that's fine just to prompt you. And then underneath you need to explain your mind map essentially. You know, we have we have candidates that that use mind maps and they put them on an entire slide. That, that's not what your mind map is for. Your mind map is a process that you've used to, to, to collate your thoughts. The, the moderator isn't essentially bothered about, but about that mind map, just that you use that to make progress. So what you should be doing in, in, in the written work that you produce, it should be an explanation of, of the key points that you unearthed through that mind mapping. Why did you create a mind map? And how is it going to allow you to make progress later on in your project? Yeah. Uh, underneath that, it's also a good idea to, to hypothesize um, what, what perhaps some of the strengths are going to be, what some of the weaknesses are going to be in your project. So, for example, with the with the music context, personally, I see that might include some kind of electronics. So if electronics is your forte, if it's something that you're incred incredibly gifted at, then that's clearly a strength for the project, isn't it? On the other hand, if electronics is not something that you're particularly gifted at, that could be seen as a weakness, perhaps too much of a challenge, and that actually could be the reason why you choose one context over another. But you must make that clear which context you're going to follow moving forward. At, th so, at this point as well, it's very important not to be too close-minded. You've got to just explore every every single avenue you can think of. Um, I would speak to as many people as you can about this. Speak to your, 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 your parents, speak to your family, speak to your peers and just just have a chat through and just share some ideas. It's, this is a good time to collaborate um, and share your ideas. So should, we, should we look at uh, the research slides? Yeah, let's do it. OK, so you'll see as well, it depends on which section we're looking at. Some some of the exemplars are one page, some are up to five or six pages. So if you look in the top right, it does tell you how many pages there are related to this to this one example. Uh, so example 1D, we've got uh, looking at re, uh, litter. It's all very well referenced that, like Mr. Stoker mentioned earlier, certain elements are in bold or in different colours. It draws your eye to them and those are the important parts. It just makes it much, much easier um, for us, for you to show that you understand what you're doing. I'll tell you, this is another good slide and, and I think it, it, it leads into the criteria that we've got here. Um, if, you, if you do look at the, the higher mark band criteria for 1.1, it reads different methods, including visual, graphic, used to structure thinking and analysis well if you look at the center of the page at the top we've got a clear bar graph as well so don't just look at news article try and find a sort of a rich collection of different media different ways of communicating because it will this all should lead into your design brief so if you have if you have statistical data from the office of national statistics which which you know if you do go on there there's a wonderful uh, report about the number of people that are working from home during coronavirus um, you know, statistics, that's giving authenticity to the project. And if you can identify a problem within those statistics, that's going to give you a clear pathway for creating a solution that has absolute worth. Um, so try and find statistical data from, from reputable um, sources, essentially. I think that's the centre of all this, Mr. Stoker, isn't it? It's, it's identifying a problem. That's what this is about. Yeah, absolutely. It's identifying a problem and then you move on to, to try and find a solution. Yeah. Okay. Another example. Yeah. Again, over two pages. You can yeah. see very, very similar, but lots and lots of different methods of collecting that data. It's not just purely written 
Um, there's lots of graphs and lots of charts explaining or researching this, this given context. My only criticism here, and we, we see this with a lot of students, is they tend to, to highlight or colour every bit of text that, 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 that's in their work. You know, for me, white space is king, you know, that, that in terms of clearly showing your thoughts. And what you should be doing is simply highlighting the key information, not all of the information. Um, it just makes it incredibly easier for you to just to share what you understand about this project and, and what grasp you've got of it. And obviously, if you can clearly guide the eye of the moderator through highlighting key areas, and it's going to make it clear that you show the moderator exactly the information that you want to show them. And I think that's really important when um, when laying out your work. Yeah, the whole project is just like telling a story and you need to make it as easy as possible for people to, to be able to follow that story. And there are marks available, specific marks available for uh, chronological order to make sure that you're doing things in, in a, a reasonable manner so you're not jumping backwards and forwards, you're doing things in a, a clear and concise manner. Yeah. Another feature that you can add to help with that narrative is shown here on the bottom right where it says next steps. So this student's clearly thinking about how this information relates to what they're going to do next and they're almost planning out the next stage in their project by the, by the time they get to the end of their research set or yeah. this initial research section. And that's something that could be included on pretty much every single page, isn't it? It just, just yeah. uh, doesn't have to be much, just a few sentences just to explain what's what's um, going to happen next. Yeah. Final example, the, the presentation is beautiful on that one. Yeah, colour and layout make a big difference. So think about your typeface, think about the colour you're using, think about how you're, you're sharing this information. From a graphics point of view, you here they've used it, oh, a really nice use of grids. So they've structured the, the information into to clear columns, uh, highlighted the, the outside as a bits of information with that orange outline. It just makes it easier to, to get that information from this page. The candidate here has, has, has highlighted a block of text, um, which, which is what they're trying to do is explain how this information relates to their project. And I think it's a very, very good example of how, uh, how students might lay out their work when, uh, when attempting their own projects. Yeah, so hopefully that was helpful to all students in the cohort. 1.1 after you've created your mind maps how to structure your work what criteria we'll be looking for in order to get those top band marks and what effective or authentic research looks like when feeding into your design brief which is in 1.2 which will be our next video right thank you very much everybody thank you see ya see you soon